Hi, it's Chef Rick, and today I'm making a ham hock terrine. Right, so for one terrine, you need three of these. They are ham hocks or ham shanks. Uh, they come from the back legs of a pig. They're inexpensive, but you're going to turn them into something incredible. So first of all, get them in a pot that's big enough to hold them and let them soak in water. Now, ask your butcher if they've done this previously, because uh, they, they, I left those for about four hours and sometimes you'll do them and there's like a bit of a scum layer on top but these were they were perfect anyway so change the water put them in fresh water and now added our standard stock vegetables so in there there's bay leaves black peppercorns carrots onions and celery everything's going to be in the description put that on the stove get it to boil so my stove needs it to be on a really high heat you obviously don't want to be on a violent boil um but then you boil them for these were about two and a half hours. After two and a half hours, take them out. And that's three. That's not the most attractive thing in the world. Probably a terrible time to ask you to like and subscribe to my videos. But if you do uh, click subscribe, it's free and it really helps me out. So I've returned the uh, water that had the ham in it back to the stove. And now I'm going to put that on to boil to reduce further by half. Now you might think, oh, it's reduced loads there. That's because I've taken the ham out, obviously, so the liquid's gone down. Um, just leave that on the stove to boil and just get more and more and more reduced. Uh, now that, will oh, forget it. So now here we go, so we've taken the ham hocks. Uh, I just wrapped them in foil here. These are still quite hot, just to let them cool. Uh, before we're going to start pulling the meat off them you can do it if you've got uh, asbestos fingers but the best way is to just put them in here just let them cool i also find as well that if you oh yeah so now the uh, the stock uh has been cooking and it's reduced significantly so now i'm just going to strain off the vegetables for this actual recipe we're not going to need anywhere near this much uh this much liquid but you can do anything with it you can use it for soups and all the rest of it which i'll i'll put a link up to what other ways to uh to deal with it that that is absolutely full of flavor it's um it's got all the stock vegetables that were in there obviously you've got the flavor from the from the ham but because that's had the bone and the fat from the ham in there there's a natural gelatin which is in this liquid and we're ultimately going to use this the, this liquid and the gelatin content of it to set the terrine so let's give it one more uh, boil down this time in a smaller saucepan just means we can just heat it a little bit quicker but again this smaller saucepan is now going to go onto the stove on a medium a medium heat so kind of a, a bit of a rapid boil there we go moved it onto the stove it's nice of that um and yeah I, again i would probably want to cook that look at that that's reduced by nearly a half again the flavors are going to intensify in it that is an absolutely beautiful beautiful soupy stock don't use it as a soup obviously uh now take out the ham hocks and this is on you now you've got to just uh, get your hands in there the bones will just slip out get rid of the fat um get rid of the bones and all of that meat that's going to be left inside uh, is what we're going to be using. I had one bowl for, for, for bones, one bowl for fat, and one bone for bits of meat. Look how easy the bones just come out of there. And there's legwork involved. But trust me, the it's going to be worth it at the end, but there's going to be quite a lot of legwork involved at this point whilst you're separating all the meat. So I was taking out what was obviously big chunks of meat, putting it into one bowl. That, see there, what I did was just a test. I was like, was that meat or fat? And as you slice through, it just was fat, so I'll throw it onto one side. Uh, we are going to do another sorting technique on this in a minute. See there, I'll just scrape off some of the excess fat. You want it to be, um, you, you want to take off as much of the, the, the clean bits of ham as possible. Try not to keep popping it in your mouth as you're doing this, although it is absolutely just delicious boiled ham that's boiled in a, in a stock. So now that's just, a, that's the first pulling of the meat. So I've taken all the meat from there. Now, what I will do is I'll just go through this meat and just start to slice it into, into big chunks. This is the second of the processes that we're going to do here. So we'll slice it into decent chunks. Uh, again, as you're doing this, you'll find maybe little bits of fat or some tiny little bits of the, like maybe cartilage bits or, or harder bits that obviously you do not want. And just work your way through it. There is, there is a final process before we all put it together. But like I say, this is where I'll just chop through the main um, really meaty fillety bits and keep removing any bits of fat and bits that you find that you don't want to have ultimately in your terrine throw those away again i'm choosing fairly like 
graphic times to ask you this, but this is the second and final time I will ask that if you like my videos, please click like. Um, and if you could also click subscribe at the bottom, you'll get notified of when I do a, a new video. I do three videos every week. It doesn't cost you anything to click subscribe, uh, but it really helps me out. So thank you in advance if you choose to do that. If not, it doesn't matter. Enjoy the video. Uh, as I said, this is just the second time. This is where I'm taking the main bodies of her. And now this is the third and final process. So this time I'll do it by hand. So I'm really starting to, I'll pull apart some of those bits. Again, you get your fingers in there. Um, you may find just a, a harder bit or a tiny bit of connective tissue. You just, just throw it away. But pretty much you've done a decent enough job. This is just a real, being a little bit fussy. Um, just to make sure that what you're left with is absolute, you know, the best, the absolute best bits of, uh, of ham. No messing around. Uh, the bowl on the left, honestly, in all honesty, you could have put that into a tureen, you could serve, serve that and it was it was good. But I was being a tiny bit fussy with the one on the right just because I wanted it to be really good. I was making it for um, a, a very special occasion for someone, so. So that's it, so now we're left with a bowl of the highest quality, perfect bits, nice chunks, no nonsense, no rubbish, just beautiful ham. In there some whole grain mustard, uh, and just mix it all around. Again, you can add anything at this stage. I just add, this, this was a very, very simple one. I just added whole grain mustard. You can add any different components at this point because what's next, we're gonna put it into, uh, so th this is a loaf tin or our terrine tin, if you like. You gotta line it with cling film. Uh, for me, I found the easiest way was just to do a couple of different layers of uh, cling film across, like that. And then to push it down into the corners, I have like hot hands, so every time I was doing it, my hands were sticking to it, so I ended up using the, the, the back end of a spoon uh, and just patting it down into the inside. So basically, that's a, a, that's how you would line a loaf tin. And now you put all the, uh, the, all the ham in there. So, a few things to say, kind of do as I say, not as I do here. This one is packed way too loosely. Um, what I would say in future, or, or when I'm, the best way to do this is ideally to have two loaf tins, to pack your first loaf tin, exactly as I'm doing here, but in a minute you'll see me being very, very delicate with it. Just my fingertips, just giving it a gentle push down. You don't want to do that. You want to really push it down. You don't want too many gaps um, in, in between the ham. So here's me like tickling it basically. But what you'd really want to do at that point is use another loaf tin and push down on it, get it all compressed. You see how much that has reduced and we didn't skim off any of the ingredients or do our ice cube trick that you've seen previously in the um, video was it I used the ice cube? I can't remember. Uh, what video was it? Anyway, you pour on this uh, liquor and it's gonna fill in all the gaps between the ham. Because that boiled and reduced down, it's absolutely packed with flavor, but it also has a natural gelatin in there from the, from the bones and the fat. So this is all you're gonna to need to set. You don't need to add any additional setting agents, gelatin or anything else like that. Oh, it's from the pulled beef brisket video that I um, used the ice cube trick. I'll put a link to that at the top of the screen now. And here again, this is me being very, very delicate. Again, you don't need to be as delicate as I'm being here. Once you've packed that in, you want it to be really tight and compact. Put another tray on it in the fridge overnight. Here we go, next day. By the way, this one I've made here is absolutely gorgeous, delicious, but like you just would want it to be a bit less gappy. You'd want the ham to be a little bit more compact. But you can see it came out ta -da, beautifully. And there's your ham hock terrine, fully formed. Uh, you just want to slice that. Uh, for your guests, serve that however you want. Uh, I'd serve mine with uh, an apple chutney. There'll be a link to the apple chutney video at the top. But that is my ham hock terrine, as simple and as basic as a ham hock terrine can get. Um, thank you so, so much for watching the video. You know how much I appreciate these things. If you like it, click like. Uh, if you want to see more, click subscribe. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.